Welcome to the Movement Upgraded Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jen Hostler, licensed physical therapist and certified strength and mobility coach. Here you can expect to hear about all things movement. The Movement Upgraded Podcast is a blend of the science of strength training, rehab, and mobility mixed with the personal and professional experience to provide you with the steps you need to keep your body pain-free and moving well so you can do what you love forever. What's up, movement nerds? Welcome back to the Movement Upgraded podcast. This is episode number four. Today, we're going to be talking about strength training. Um, We're going to cover some of the reasons that I'm such a big proponent of strength training. I talk about it a lot on Instagram. I have written so many programs for clients that I work with that originally came in for some sort of pain or issue and are like, well, I actually have learned that I need to strength train. So we end up doing a lot of programming and do a lot of education in my clinic on programming for strength training specifically. So we're going to talk about why it's such a big part of my practice and what I promote. We're also going to talk about what it really is and why most workouts that include weights or some sort of resistance training aren't necessarily strength training. Um, And then we're going to also briefly discuss what a strength training program looks like. So we're going to cover all those in this 30 or so minute podcast. So bear with me as we get through all of it. If you already know a lot about some of those things, this may be a great refresher for you. If not, it's going to be a great introduction to the next podcast after this, which we're going to cover some of these strength training principles and apply them to mobility training and rehab. So without further ado, let's talk about why I'm such a big proponent for strength training. And really, I'm going to come at this from a lens of I'm a physical therapist. That is my training. Um, I am a strength coach. I have my CSCS. I did have a bachelor's degree in exercise science. Um, and we did a lot of focus on strength training in there. So I have a pretty decent background on strength training. And so, of course, that's where my um, I guess bias is going to come from. So the biggest reason that I want to see more people doing lifting activities and strength training is because it's really important in mitigating injuries. And a lot of people don't fully understand how strength training is really beneficial, but it's really increasing your tissue capacity. So capacity is the ability of the tissues in your body to withstand forces. Tissues are anything from your muscles to your skin, to your fascia, to your ligaments and tendons. Those are all different tissues. And when you strength train, you're strengthening all of them and including your bones. And when we strength train over months and years, we build really strong tissues that can tolerate and withstand more forces. When we don't strength train as we get older, all of those things actually become like less strong. They become weak and brittle and their capacity decreases or diminishes again without strength training or exercising. And I usually describe capacity as um, the capacity of your tissues as like a rubber band. If you've ever seen like those nice new rubber bands, they're nice and stretchy. They can you can stretch them out quite a bit which is applying force to them but over time due to weather or whatnot if you try to stretch that rubber band you notice it becomes brittle it kind of dries out and it cannot tolerate you stretching it very far before it will break and that's kind of essentially a very oversimplified explanation of why it's so important to strength train to mitigate injuries and this is as we age but also like currently now over months you can improve the ability of your body to tolerate and mitigate injuries and I use the word mitigate I don't know if I've covered this yet in a podcast but we're going to pretend we haven't in case you're new mitigate is definitely what we want to think about when it comes to injuries we don't prevent preventing indicates that we can just like never get injured and we can't life will throw us curveballs we are going to get injured at some point in our lives because that's part of being human and being alive mitigation really just means we are not going to get injured as frequently the injuries are going to be less severe and or the recovery is going to be 
less long. So we'll recover faster from those injuries. So that's what we're looking for with injury mitigation, less injuries, less intense of an injury or significant of an injury and improved recovery time. And those are worth chasing in my opinion. So that's the big, most important thing that I wanted to cover. Strength training really is important for mitigating injuries. It's also important for improving performance. If you're stronger, you're going to be more efficient. There's going to be a time when strength doesn't carry over to better performance, but for the most part, a little bit Uh, of strength goes a long way. If you are a runner and you want to get better at running and more efficient, being stronger in strength training is going to help you do that. It's also going to help you mitigate the injuries that often happen with runners as well. The third thing that I want to cover and why it's so important and that we don't always understand or hear about is actually what strength training does for our pain thresholds. So all of us have different thresholds of, um, thresholds that at some point when we reach them, if we go up at that point or higher, we are going to experience pain. So usually that's some amount of force or load on our bodies, whether it is one big load right away, or it is a repetitive amount of load before our bodies will feel pain. And this is often a very nuanced conversation. It's complex. And I'm not going to get into the full overload of pain neuroscience right in this episode, but pain's complicated and it doesn't always mean that there's damage. Sometimes it just means that we've had a lot of load or a lot of repeated load on an area that has a low pain threshold and different things affect your pain thresholds and it doesn't again always mean there is damage so the best way i like to explain that is if you think about tapping your arm it's not painful it's not very much like just with your finger it's not very much to actually like produce some sort of damage to your arm but if you did that for hours on end for days and weeks that one spot on your arm is probably going to get really sensitive it might even bruise a little bit that is a perfect example of changing your pain threshold so then after you've tapped it for so long it suddenly might just take something very lightly touching your arm and all of a sudden you feel pain. That's because your pain threshold has decreased and now you are more sensitive and it takes less forces to experience pain. So when we actually strength train, we are making it harder for our bodies to experience pain. And that is really helpful if you're somebody who's experienced chronic pain in some part of their bodies or even chronic tightness or discomfort. Sometimes progressive overload and strength training is a great way to increase that pain threshold. Now, we have to make sure we do it in a way that's not jumping into things and overloading it way too fast. But again, that's all conversations that's beyond this one podcast episode. But really what you need to understand is that you are changing your pain thresholds and you're making your body be able to tolerate and withstand pain and forces sorry, withstand forces without pain to a higher degree, which is really helpful. Again, if you're somebody who experiences a lot of pain often in your life. The last thing I wanted to cover, which I kind of already hinted at, um, with for a reason for why we need to strength train is bone density. And this is particularly, particularly important for women because once we hit a certain age and I, want to say it's 30. Once we hit this age, we have reached usually our peak bone density without doing anything else. And as we age, our bone density will decrease again without doing anything else. If we exercise and load our bones or load our bodies, which are going to be loading our bones, then we are going to make those stronger and we're going to mitigate how much bone density we lose as we get older. It's so, so important for women because we have a really high risk of breaking bones and having stress fractures as we get older. And not only are those really painful, but they can be super debilitating. I don't know if you've followed some of my work, you'll know that like I tend to think very far often into the future when I am educating, when I think about my own workouts and things like that. I'm far more interested in doing things that will help me when I am 70 and 80 than doing things that will make my life a little bit more convenient now. I would rather embrace inconvenience like 
workouts that are not necessarily super fun, knowing that I'm trying to build myself a better future. And when I think about my future self at 70 or 80, I like to think of a woman who still is in the gym, still is doing some sort of exercise, and who isn't necessarily super frail and worried about breaking a hip as I fall. And the way that I do that is making sure that I'm lifting now. Now I can't completely control what's going to happen in my future. I don't even know if I'm going to reach 80 years old, but I can do what I can now, which is strength train to make sure I am controlling what I can. So that's why strength training is so important. Uh, Bone density is very, very important for women, especially because of our hormonal changes that happen, especially as we even hit menopause, but even before we start to lose some of our bone density. So make sure we are lifting weights and they don't need to just be these little three pound plastic dumbbells. They need to be challenging weights. Obviously any resistance exercise is going to be better than none, but we want to make sure we're challenging ourselves, which I'm going to get into in this podcast. So those are the big four reasons that I like to really promote strength training and why we have a podcast on that today. So Now that we kind of understand why it's so important, let's talk about what strength training is. And if you look up a definition, you'll find things that are basically about um, resistance training or exercises that are designed to build muscle. And this isn't necessarily a wrong definition. It's just incomplete. And I mentioned in podcast episode number two, I think it was two, um, that I didn't necessarily agree entirely with the CDC recommendations. I just don't think they're enough, but they are a starting point, which is totally fine. I do tend to recommend people that work with me or people that are close to me or anybody who asks for advice to do a little bit more than what's recommended because it gave an example on the CDC of yoga being a good example for resistance training or strength training and yoga is fine, but is not building strength. Um, it is not enough. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today, but that was one example. Resistance bands, again, are not going to be enough, but they are perfect to start. So just because something isn't enough in the long run or isn't optimal doesn't mean it's not doing anything for you. So I like to throw that in there because that all or nothing mindset tends to sneak in and we're like, well, Jen says this isn't enough, then why am I even doing it? No, (laughs) you know, it's better doing resistance band training than anything at all. And we all experienced a lot of reminders of that when the pandemic hit and we all had to work out at home and we didn't have equipment necessarily at home. And so there was all of the here's body weight exercises and resistance band exercises to fix things and um, or not to fix things, but to be able to continue doing some sort of resistance training at home. They're still going to do something. It's just not quite optimal or enough for the four things that I mentioned of why I am a big proponent of strength training. So what then really is strength training or what counts? I just want you to remember that just because something is hard doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, like strength training. So just because it has resistance doesn't mean it's enough for those things. So when it comes to making sure that we are doing or putting forth the effort, there's the word, putting forth the effort or doing the things um, when in the gym, when it comes to having specific goals that we want to achieve, those things that we do in the gym need to be more intentional. So if you are really in the gym and your goal besides health is to age well, to minimize injuries, to build bone density for your future self, then you're going to have to be a little bit more intentional in your workouts and you're going to have to do a little bit more than just the yoga with three pound dumbbells or resistance band workouts. So there's really two big things to pay attention to that really make your workouts become strength training or make an exercise uh, workout that you're doing a strength training program. And those really boil down to one specificity and two progressive overload. So we're going to cover both of those. I'm going to cover what they are and um, give you some examples of how to implement it. And then we'll put it together in some examples of what a strength training program looks like. But specificity is number one. So let's cover that. So this is usually referred to as the SAID principle, S-A-I-D, SAID principle, which stands for specific adaptation to imposed demands. That just means that your body is going to make a specific adaptation that's specific to the demand or the stressor or the exercise that you do. 
the basically the way that I like to explain this is that your body is always trying to get better at what you're doing. Exercise is a stressor. Your body wants to get better at that stressor so it can protect you in the future because our bodies, again, are always trying to get better at the things we're doing to expend less energy and to protect us. So it makes changes in our body's adaptations in order to do so. This is like exercise number one. Stressor, exercise, challenges your body. You recover or rest. Your body makes some changes and then you come back to that same stressor or challenge and you're a little bit better and you rinse and repeat forever. Now, usually the changes and adaptations aren't happening quite so quickly as one workout, bam, your body has done this, right? It takes a lot of repetition of similar workouts. It's really important to understand that because strength training is very often the same exact workouts for multiple weeks or months at a time. Most often I see people change their workouts way too often. It's okay if you like variability to change your workouts. If your goal is just to exercise and stay moving and check those bodies boxes that we talked about in episode number two. But if you really have a goal of doing the things that we talked about earlier, right? Those four big reasons that strength training is important to be part of your workout regimen, then we really need to be more specific and make sure that we are being specific in our workouts and giving our body specific instructions every single week of what we want it to do. That's why we need to repeat those workouts on a regular basis. It's more information for your body to get better at the things you want it to get better at. It's just more specific. The things that happen in your body according to the exercise that you do are very specific to the exercise that you do down to a cellular level. I'm not going to get super duper intense and nerdy on you, but it's basically the reason that when you do bicep curls, you get bigger biceps and you don't get bigger cal- calves, calves, bigger calves. It's you're training your biceps, you're loading your biceps, your biceps are going to get bigger, not your calves. That is progressive, or, I'm sorry, not progressive overload. That is specificity. We're talking about progressive overload next. If you want to also um, think about this, specificity also actually applies to running and cardio, which we're not talking about today, but running faster and being able to run faster is not the same as running further and your workouts for cardio are going to need to look different if you want to run faster than if you want to run further or if you just want to be able to run and not feel like you're dying but this is why as you work out you start to feel like okay I am getting better at those workouts. Like suddenly I was dying at running a mile and now I'm not. It's because your body is making those adaptations and those changes all the way down to a cellular cellular level um, that makes you better at that thing. And that is the principle of specificity or the said principle. That is number one thing that needs to be part of your strength training program is understanding that it just will help you guide your exercise selection, right? So if you are wanting to get build strength for a pull-up, those exercises are going to be very specific to what you need for a pull-up. If you want to build strength for a better squat, you're going to need to make sure that you are working on exercises for squat strength. If you want to build muscle, you're going to have to choose exercises that load that muscle enough to induce hypertrophy or muscle growth. So all of those things change how you choose your exercises and what exercises you choose. The adaptation, again, is very specific to what you're doing, not just the exercise you're doing, right? So bicep curls mean your biceps are going to grow, but not your calves, but also they're very specific to the type or the way you do the exercise or the rest or the reps that you do or the weight that you utilize. So all of those things matter. So the intensity you're doing the exercise, the type of exercise, the number of reps and the load, all of those things matter. And the more specific of a goal you have, the more specific you have to get with those prescription or that programming for your strength training program. So that is specificity. Let's talk about the second thing, one of the things that is also um, important for strength training and simultaneously missing in a lot of application of strength training is progressive overload. And this has become something that's a very hot topic recently on social media or was last year, I feel like, but, 
I still don't know if we really fully understand it. And I definitely don't see this topic being applied to rehab and mobility, which is what we're going to do in episode two. So what the heck is progressive overload? It is essentially just slowly making the exercise harder because you are getting better at it. I already mentioned this, but our body makes adaptations specific to the stressors or the exercises or the loads or what we're doing. So if we're making those adaptations, we, be, we become better at the exercises. So then those exercises no longer become quite the challenge. And if we do not have a challenge anymore, we will actually start to regress instead of progress. So if the exercises that we're doing are no longer as challenging because we get better, then we'll just stay where we are, which is maintaining, which isn't bad. Or if it is too easy or we're just not doing those challenging exercises anymore, then we will actually regress and we'll get weaker um, according to whatever the load is that we're doing. So if you were really good about like strength training and you're really challenging yourself for a while and then you take some time off and you can't get to the gym, you're not strength training, then you're going to lose some strength. That is going to be a normal cycle that happens in your life and it's something to understand, but this is kind of uh, often referred to as a reversibility principle, but it's just the opposite of progressive overload. So we are requiring a constant challenge because our body's dynamic. You don't get fit and then never have to do anything for the rest of your life. You don't get strong and then just maintain your strength without having to do anything. You actually have to put effort into maintenance, which is the most annoying thing about fitness. I literally, like the whole thing is a scam, but here we are talking about it, right? So we have to make sure that we are slowly progressing our weight or our exercises so that we are challenging our bodies as time goes on and we get better. Now, how we do this depends. You can increase the reps, which is the most simple way. You can slowly add a rep or two every week. You can increase the load. So that's adding weight, which sometimes we do this and we get a little bit overzealous and our egos take over because we just want to see how much weight we can lift. Um, But we really want to make it slow to allow our bodies time to adapt to the load and be able to tolerate that new load. And then intensity, which is just how much effort we're putting towards it, or um, really it boils down to effort a lot when I prescribe things. Sometimes time, if we're holding our reps for a while, or we have some sort of holds or ISOs, then we're going to need to progress in time, or you can decrease the rest in between your sets that you're working on. So Instead of maybe resting for 90 seconds, you just cut that in half and you rest for only 45 seconds and that becomes more challenging. There are basically unlimited ways that you can change things to progressively overload them, which is phenomenal and can be overwhelming. It, you don't need to do all of them at once. You can just pick one one thing. Just keep it really simple. I'm very into simple programming for majority of the population. Most people don't need something super crazy. So the thing I want you to remember about this though is that progressions are not going to happen linearly, which means you're not going to go into the gym every single week and do your workout and see, okay, I'm putting in on five pounds every single week. You might be able to do that for some time, but the um, stronger you get, the longer you get into the gym, the less the closer you're going to hit your actual peak and you're not going to be able to do this anymore, or sometimes you just aren't recovering well, it's just not going to happen because nothing really happens linearly, right? We are going to make some progressions, especially if we're new. There's a lot of newbie gains. You'll see a lot of the ability to do more reps, do more weight. It's super fun. Um, But there are going to be times when maybe you're not recovered. Maybe your stress is higher. You didn't eat enough. You didn't sleep well the night before. And you're going to feel like you are either doing the same effort or you are like having to put way more effort and the weights feel way heavier. That is totally normal when your recovery is not good. That's our our nervous system's way of making sure we don't injure ourselves and we should adhere to that instead of expecting to constantly progressively overload. So I like to tell people, like if we think about a pendulum swinging between two opposing principles, there is the make sure you're progressively overloading and challenging yourself on a regular basis. And then there's the other side of the pendulum, which is never progressively overload and do the exact same thing and just don't 
change things, you want to kind of swing towards the middle, which means sometimes you're going to be able to overload and progress and challenge yourselves. And sometimes you're going to need to not do that. And maybe you need a rest day, or maybe you just need to change um, your weight or intensity or reps and actually drop them a little bit to meet you where you are. The easiest way that I normally tell people to do this is through RPE or rate of perceived exertion. It is my favorite way of basically um, auto regulation or just being able to self monitor and self change what you're doing. So if you normally go in and you squat a hundred pounds and that is your prescription for three sets of eight and you are warming up with 45 pounds and normally that feels like an RPE of like two, but today it feels like you're already at an RPE of five or six. RPE is usually used on a scale of a zero to 10. Zero means you are literally like nothing, a blob on the couch. You're not moving. You're not putting forth any exertion or physical effort. And 10 is like your absolute max. Somebody is in a car accident and you are like trying to rip the car off of them to save them like max effort you could not physically do anymore. You're going to normally want to be at about a seven to eight for a lot of your workouts. That needs to be pretty challenging, but there are going to be times when because you're not recovered, you're going to have to back off a little bit and be at a lower um, lower weight because your RP is higher for a lower weight. That's totally normal. So we like to track our workouts and make sure we're putting them, um, tracking them somewhere, but we want to also make sure that we have room for flexibility, right? So I always like to say we like to have flexible discipline. I want you to be there consistently because you need to do, you need to be consistent to see results, but you also need to have that flexibility because you're not going to be perfectly recovered every time. Sometimes life just happens and make sure you have the ability to adjust. So don't expect to progressively overload and just jump in weight and reps and everything's like, awesome. I love when that happens, but it's not going to on a regular basis. So make sure you manage those expectations. So to recap, those are the two things that we really need to make sure we are understanding and utilizing when it comes to strength training, specificity and progressive overload. They're also, again, consequently, the missing pieces in most rehab and mobility programs, but we're going to discuss that in the next episode. So what does a strength training program really look like? Typically, it is a program that you follow of the same workouts or very similar workouts on a week-to-week basis. And usually there are workouts prescribed for the week that you just repeat the next week and you do that for around four to six weeks, sometimes up to eight weeks, depending on what your goals are and how consistent you are with the program. But essentially you can do workouts as little as two times a week. That's usually the bare minimum like requirement or recommendation from the CDC or up to five times. Just a reminder that even one time a week is okay for like a little bit of a time. That's enough to maintain. Um, it's, you know, like if if majority, I know there's a lot of type A listeners because that's what I am. That's a lot of who I work with. Just remember that if you're normally really consistent with your workouts on a regular basis and you miss some workouts and you're only able to do like one time a week every once in a while or for a month you can't really lift, it's okay. Remember, we have to zoom out enough. We talked about zooming in and out on a regular basis in um, episode one. We want to make sure we zoom out enough to look at the bigger picture of how consistent and um, we are on in a grand scheme of things. So back to how often. Two times a week is the bare minimum. Five times a week is usually what I recommend as the maximum unless you're like an athlete and you're I don't really even think most people need to go lift six days a week. So usually I recommend up to five days a week. Most people I work with are doing two to three days because that's about the sweet spot for life. And that is, you can get a lot done in those two to three days and just try to stay active or do your other favorite activities um, that are workouts in the other days, right? Like exercise can be a a variety of different things and movements from anything to running and Zumba to walking and cycling, whatever it is that you like to do. Strength training just kind of provides you with the the backbone, the foundation for all of those things. So normally one workout on average will take about 45 to 60 minutes, but you can actually be super efficient and get a decent workout in 15 to 20 or even 30 minutes. It's not 
a requirement that you have to have a certain amount of minutes for your workouts. What's really important during those strength training sessions is that you're lifting heavy enough that you feel like the last couple are like you could do two more reps with the weight that you're using, but you would have to give like your max effort. Like it would be really hard to squeeze it out. That's about a seven to an eight RPE. It should be hard. A lot of people are not challenging themselves enough. The other thing to remember is generally... Usually when I program and the kind of the average is about six to eight um, exercises per session, I will sometimes do only four main strength exercises and a couple accessories if I have time, but I'll oftentimes, if I'm on a real strict schedule, I'll just do four main lifts and call it a day and that's it. And it'll take me 20 minutes and it's amazing. And that's a maintenance mode for me. So I just want you to understand the barrier is not as large. You don't need to be lifting weights five days a week for it to count. The two is the minimum. Most of the people I work with are doing their workouts in 45 minutes max. So, and that's mobility with strength combined. So that's kind of generally what a strength training program will look like. The movements and the exercises you choose, the goal is really to just hit all of your main muscle groups. A lot of people will, um, Put these into patterns like movement patterns of your push muscles and your pull muscles, both your upper and lower body. That's a great way to think about things because it kind of covers the gist of the majority. Um, There's obviously like carrying and lunging and things that you could add to that. But if you are hitting the basics of upper and lower body push and pull exercises, you're probably going to hit majority of the main things accessories and things beyond that are just going to be really conducive to like uh they're really going to depend there's the word they're going to depend on your goals so most of the time my recommendations for strength training is to pick the general movements that are going to hit most of your muscles and then from there you can kind of tailor them to something that is very similar to what you do in a regular basis so that might just mean your regular life or that might mean like the activity that you like to do for workout so you can make sure you have the capacity to um and improved performance to do them um and it's sometimes helpful to do a few accessories in different positions or different movements that you are not normally doing so that you are maintaining the strength and um, control in those other movements. And we might get into that in the next episode, but that's kind of the gist of those recommendations. So most workouts, even those that have weight involved are not strength training. They might count as lifting for bone density, but they are too variable to expect results, which is kind of the whole purpose of why I put this episode together. I'm not here to tell you and to shame you and to be like, it needs to look like X, Y, Z, because that's not what I'm here for. And I don't really agree with it. And we have enough people who are not even lifting at all. And we don't even have enough people who are exercising enough to create more barriers to make it harder for you to exercise. What I do want you to understand is that when it comes to like rehab or specific goals where you really want to see some muscle mass or some muscle definition, or you really want to feel like, okay, my life is better when I'm doing my normal activities and I can tell that finally because things are easier because of my strength training. If that is you, then you're going to have to be a little bit more specific with your strength training programs and you can't just lift weights. And I'm going to give you a few examples of of things that people will be like, well, isn't this considered strength training? One of those is circuit training. Circuit training is usually where you do a handful of exercises back to back and you just cycle through them without rest. The main goal of a circuit exercise program is to get your heart rate up, which is totally fine because that's exercise, but usually the weights are not challenging enough for your muscles and bones because you have to move fast and get your heart rate up. So that is the number one thing. And the number two is they're usually variable. You're not usually doing the same ones on a week-to-week basis. You're doing different workouts. You're not staying consistent with the same things, which means they're lacking specificity. Another example is CrossFit. Um, And I used to do CrossFit. This is not me hating on CrossFit. This is just me telling you that strength train or CrossFit is not strength training. CrossFit is basically circuit training um, and it is not specific enough to create 
the tissue capacity that you want to be able to like manage your loads and make sure that you are mitigating injuries. Now, usually with CrossFit, you are doing heavier loads. So you're going to probably get the bone density adaptations. And if you go do a CrossFit um, go to a box that is actually has really good programming. They may be managing your loads better, but very few do that very well. And they just kind of are more random. So your strength training program would actually be important to still be doing on top of CrossFit, um, and maybe doing CrossFit less often and working on actually training things in the background to support the CrossFit classes that you like to do. Um, The other thing about CrossFit is a lot of times they'll have sudden spikes. So you'll do like a sudden movement and you'll do lots of volume. And that sudden spike in load is when we have an increased risk, significantly increased risk for an injury. So when you are at random doing things and you're not managing those loads and being specific and creating a program, um, like what I'm talking about in strength training, that's when we tend to have more injuries. The last one people will talk to me about often is running. And they'll be like, well, running is high impact. It's like pushing on my feet and my bones, right? Which is true, but Unless your weight changes, it's the same load through your bones, and that doesn't change after many months or years. Also, it's not loading your upper body, not really. So um, usually people who are running really especially need to lift weights, and they feel a lot better. A lot of those nagging injuries that runners deal with go away or get significantly better with just strength training, like a strength training program. Um, and a lot of their running economy, their efficiency gets better. So they become better runners. It becomes easier. They start to PR. It's pretty great. I actually like working with runners because they can notice things very quickly or they can notice minor changes. Um, and then they become, they had noticed the bigger changes later too, but running is not strength training. (laughs) Um, so just because something's hard or a load or it feels like it's loading your body doesn't mean it's strength training. And if you're wondering, by the way, how in the world are like a, an exercise where you're lifting a weight is loading your bones. Anytime you load your body, it's going through all of your body, but especially like the load is going through through the area that is being loaded. And I know that sounds like so duh, but hear me out. If you are doing a bicep curl, your bicep attaches to two joints or two, sorry, two bones. It crosses a joint and the bones that it attaches to, it's pulling on them. And that pull is actually telling your bones to become a little bit stronger. Not to mention if you're lifting a weight overhead, that load is going through your arm into your shoulder and it's loading your actual like humerus arm bone and your, um, radius and ulna, which are your other, your forearm bones. So that is how your bone density is starting to increase with those loads. So that's how that's happening. My last few things I just want to leave you with are that beyond the other things that I said, which are very like movement related and everything, strength training is just really amazing for confidence and developing skills like pull-ups or push-ups. Like if you want to develop those skills, you have to work on strength training. Like you have to train for them. You won't just randomly get them unless you're training for them. And it's also just really amazing for self-trust. And if you haven't experienced it, I highly recommend it. Obviously it's going to be better if you can find somebody to work with in person, but there's a lot of great programs out there, um, that teach people how to lift weights. Um, but it's also really important too, if you have a nagging injury, I kind of hinted at this, but understanding and controlling the load, Um, of the area where you're injured or have a lot of pain and then slowly progressing that tolerance to the load is a big part of the rehab process. And in episode three, I talked about how strength training and progressive overload were one of the things that really helped me get out of pain in my back and my knee. And this is why. So again, this is why I'm so adamant about it and why we have a whole episode on it. I mean, (sighs) And also, like not to mention, it's really important for you to be able to age well. It just makes everything in your life easier. If you want to be able to get up and down off of a chair easier without thinking about it, or you want to be able to like go on a hike and not feel like you're dying because your legs are so tired, or just the simple act of being able to carry groceries in or reach overhead in a cabinet, when you have higher strength, everything else becomes easier. So you want to do 
hard things in the gym so your life is a little bit easier so you can manage the hard things outside of life. It's You basically are building a reserve in the gym that you can lean on in your regular life. And it's going to boost your ability to deal with life struggles too because you're building capacity. And it's not just physical capacity, but it's mental mental capacity too. Um, so there are just so many life lessons in lifting. And that is my last little... Um, I hope that you decide to challenge yourself in strength training a little bit more or maybe be a little bit more specific with your strength training program because of all of those things. So to recap, strength training is important. It needs to include specificity. We've got to be really specific about what we're trying to do and consistent with those same exercises on a regular basis. We need progressive overload. The more specific goals that you have, the more intentional you need to be. In the next episode, we're going to apply this to mobility training specifically uh, because this is the missing link between, this is the missing link for most people's understanding of mobility. We really think mobility is like all of these random flows and stretches and we kind of don't understand it. And I'd like to add a little bit of science and um, application of what we already know when it comes to exercise into that. So I look forward to going through all of that with you. I hope that you learned something in the podcast. If you did, feel free to share it. Tag me on social media at Jen Hustler. Um, Also, feel free to email me any feedback also and or share with somebody who you think would benefit from this information. Um, I love hearing from you. I'm sure other people would appreciate learning some of this. So thank you for listening and I will catch you in the next episode. (laughs) 